If you've ever seen the HBO series Deadwood, your first thoughts are probably about Ian McShane's character, Al Swearingen, or perhaps the overabundance of extremely salty language which is delivered in the midst of flowery prose. Seriously though, we had a look for clips which we could use in this video and none of them are remotely safe enough for work. And then you start thinking about other characters and eventually you'll get to Timothy Oliphant's character, Seth Bullock. Despite being the show's protagonist, Bullock isn't typically the guy you'd immediately jump to. That may be due to the fact that since the show was axed way too early, creator David Milch never got a chance to put on display all of the ways in which the real-life Seth Bullock was an incredible historical badass. If you're at all familiar with the show, you probably also know that it's based on real people doing real things in a real town. Yes, there really was an El Swearingen. Yes, there was was a gem saloon. There still is, in fact. And yes, there was a real live Seth Bullock. And as we alluded to before, the show only gave us a small part of just what an iconic figure he really was in the history of American law enforcement. Born in Canada and the son of a soldier and politician, Bullock found his way to Montana as a teenager. He became involved in politics himself at a young age and, in fact, played a key role in getting Yellowstone established as America's first national park. Somehow, despite that, he still only vaguely remembered, and that's mostly thanks to the show. But there are some other reasons people should better remember Deadwood's ass-kicking sheriff. Well, first off is the fact that he may have run the herbs out of Deadwood, but you should take that with a grain of salt because the details around this one are vague at best, and the show itself actually did sort of deal with the run-in between Bullock and the herbs, Wyatt and Morgan specifically. Wyatt Earp is obviously probably the most famous lawman in American history, yet the story goes that he and Morgan ventured up to Deadwood in search of their fortune like so many before them had done. Deadwood was a prospective town after all there's gold in the hills and all of that stuff but there are also stories about how Wyatt was looking to muscle his way into the local law enforcement which obviously would have rubbed Bullock the wrong way this particular angle was written about by Bullock's son so obviously it's coming from a biased perspective but as David Milch pointed out in interviews it checks out that the presence of the herbs in Deadwood and the reasons they told Bullock they were there wasn't entirely on the up and up anyway according to the account of how things happened Bullock quickly let the herbs know that they weren't needed. Specifically, Bullock and Wyatt didn't see eye to eye on an issue and the rumor being that that's what drove the Earps out of Deadwood. Morgan actually left before Wyatt. If this account is true, it means we actually have an actual situation where the town was not big enough for the both of them. While getting rid of Wyatt Earp is certainly something that makes him a badass, there's also the fact that Teddy Roosevelt thought he was awesome. I mean, we all know Teddy Roosevelt is awesome, so if he thought you were awesome, you can just extrapolate from there. Now, like so much of Bullock's life, there's some confusion about when exactly he and the future president first met. Roosevelt had moved to the Dakotas in the 1880s, though Roosevelt would write in a letter that he first met Bullock in 1892. However, other reports place the two men crossing paths for the first time in 1884, when they were both in pursuit of the same horse thief. Roosevelt was, at that time, serving as a deputy in Medora, North Dakota, located about 200 miles and change north of Deadwood. According to that particular tale, it was over their shared interest in justice that they bonded over coffee and beans, and their friendship lasted throughout the rest of Roosevelt's life. The two further bonded at the time of the Spanish-American War when Roosevelt was in the midst of getting his rough riders to Cuba. Bullock, who is reported to have idolized Roosevelt, quickly volunteered and gained the rank of captain of Troop A, part of Grigsby's cowboy regiment. While Bullock was technically a rough rider, he never did get to fight in the Spanish-American War as Roosevelt and his boys made quick work of the situation in Cuba. Troop A, meanwhile, never made it out of training. The war was simply over too quickly. But the mutual admiration between the two men had continued, and in 1905, after he had become President of the United States following William McKinley's assassination, Roosevelt appointed Bullock as a U.S. Marshal for the District of South Dakota. He would go on to hold that position for nine years, with both Taft and Woodrow Wilson reappointing him when each man took over the presidency. Bullock and a group of real authentic cowboys had previously made the ride from South Dakota to Washington, D.C. in order to participate in Roosevelt's inauguration parade. When Roosevelt died in 1919, Bullock had a monument erected to him on what would later be named Mount Roosevelt. Dedicating it on the 4th of July that year, it was the first memorial to Roosevelt constructed anywhere in the United States. Bullock actually died a short time after Roosevelt, but you may still be able to encounter him. And that's because he might be haunting his own hotel. Alright, so you're probably 
not going to be able to encounter the real Seth Bullock unless you happen to believe in ghosts. But whether or not you do believe in ghosts, you might be interested in staying in the Bullock Hotel in Deadwood, which was built and operated by the man himself and continues to operate to this very day. At the time of construction, it was considered one of the most luxurious hotels of its kind, and it also happened to be where Bullock succumbed to cancer, in room 211 specifically. And now, because apparently everyone loves a good haunted house story, of course the word is that Bullock's spirit still haunts the place. Not just the room he died in, of course. Did you really think that a larger-than-life cowboy of Bullock's stature, Rosa once described him as the finest type of frontiersman after all, would be limited to a single room in death? Supposedly, Bullock's spirit roams the second and third floors of the hotel. It's not just a small local legend to drum up business, either. The haunting has drawn attention from such television shows as Ghost Adventures and Unsolved Mysteries. So, if you go to stay the night in the Bullock Hotel, are you likely to bump into Deadwood's famed sheriff? Nah, probably not, unless Tim Oliphant happens to be in town. At the end of the day, Seth Bullock is a fascinating figure from history. Now, obviously, things weren't all sunshine and rainbows, and he wasn't a guy who walked on water. Although, considering his reputation as a storyteller, he may have tried to convince you that he could do exactly that. But this small sampling of the things Bullock did after the events of Deadwood should give you an idea of just how little the show got to tell us about this man. If the series had continued past its truncated third season, could we have gotten a storyline about Bullock and Teddy Roosevelt teaming up to track down a gang of horse thieves? Well, it certainly would have been possible. Despite reports to the contrary, chances still are fairly slim that we'll ever get to see the continued adventures of Seth Bullock. After all, the series has been off the air for more than a decade, and its actors are awfully busy these days. There's also the fact that Oliphant himself has stated rather emphatically that he doesn't believe the long-rumored Deadwood movie will ever happen. But considering a script is reportedly finished and HBO recently received a tax credit to begin filming, there is always hope. And if they ever finally get the cameras rolling, we can only hope that they'll dig in to what an Old West legend Seth Bullock actually was. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, if you're looking for something else to watch right now, why not check out my other channel? It's called Today I Found Out. Actually, stuff quite a bit like this, not in the top tens format as we normally do here at Top Tens Net. You can find a link to that on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.